All right, hello everybody. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining my talk. Some of the people I already know from yesterday. Ramkas, is it right? Yes, sir. Perfect. Okay, and yeah, thank you to WordCamp for um, giving me the chance here to talk um, about one of my topics. And yeah, let's see what I got for you today. So the talk is called Content Security Policy One-on-One. -on -one. And I want to show you with this talk what content security policy is, what you can do with it, and how it could be of use for one of your projects, and WordPress project as well. Come in, no problem. We have enough seats. Okay, but before we start, maybe some first information about myself. Hello. <laughs> Um, my name is Christoph Humper. I'm a developer here from Vienna. I do mostly PHP and Laravel stuff, so PHP software development. And in the last two years, I have done a lot of projects with chatbots. So that's also something that I do a lot lately. And from time to time, I do talks like today at meetups and at conferences about the things that I do. And you can find me on Twitter. My name is Christoph Rumpel, my handler there, so check it out. And I also have a blog where you can find log lots of blog posts about these topics and other stuff. Before we go into the talk, I also want to mention one of my latest projects, which is an ebook that I'm writing right now. It's called Build Chatbots with PHP. So if you're a PHP developer, and I guess most of you are, and if you're interested in chatbots, um, please check it out. There's also a free chapter available already, and I'm always happy for feedback. Um, the website is called buildchatbotswithphp.com, and you also find the link and some blog articles about it on my personal blog. Okay, but back to the topic. So content security policy is obviously some, something about security. And I guess we can all agree on that, that um, security is really hard. There are so many things we need to take care of, and yeah, it's, it's a little bit mind-blowing. We have to take care of plugins, input handling, updates, brute force attacks, storing credentials, um, cross-site request forgery, um, SQL injection, nonces, um, SSL certificates and so on, and this is only a bunch of things that came into my mind when I did this slide, so there are much more of them, and you can easily see that security topic, especially in web application, is really big and it's really overwhelming. So, um, you probably also know of some of the famous leaks happened in the last year, like a big one at Adobe, the PlayStation Network, or Cloudflare, and there are many, many more of them. And when you think about this, um, maybe this question comes to your mind. So how can we protect our sites when even the big companies can't? Because they got the money, they got the people, they got the power, but they can't secure the site. So how can we do this? So you then might think, okay, maybe my site, my WordPress site is not as interesting as um, the one from Adobe or from um, PlayStation Network. But maybe at some point your site will be interesting to some hackers. And if you don't um, take care of that, yeah, you're kind of doomed. So I think we all still should consider um, security. And the only thing that we can do is go step by step and take security seriously, checking out new stuff, learn from mistakes that you did. I'm sure every one of you has in some way done some security mistakes and you need to learn from them and do them next time better. And this is the only way we can handle this overwhelming topic, the topic just by going step by step. So um, what is content security policy? Um, the Mozilla web documentation says um, content security policy is an added layer of security that helps to detect and mitigate certain types of attacks, including cross-site scripting and data injection. So okay, so it's a kind of security layer. But um, if we try to um, take a simple way of explaining it, we can say um, CSP, Content Security Policy, lets you define trusted resources for your website. 
So it's a kind of whitelisting what your website is allowed to load in terms of scripts, styles, images, and so on. And with whitelisting the resources that we allow on our side, we are also saying all the other resources we don't want to be loaded. And this is where the browser blocks them and you don't run into occasions where scripts get loaded that you don't want to be. So how does this look like? You can add CSP with a content security policy header in your site. You got a header name, which you see on the left, and you got a header value, which you can see on the right. And on the right, we define the policies, the rules for the resources that we want to define. So a first example would look something like this. Here on the right, we have the string, our policies, we separate them with semicolons, and each of this policy defines something for a certain type of data. So with these policies, we need to um, take in mind there are directives. These are the things on the left, so, it, so the data sources, the types. Like the first one is we're talking about images, the second one we're talking about scripts. And on the right, we then define the sources that are allowed to be loaded for these directives, for these types. And if we want to translate that, we can say the first policy means Images are allowed to be loaded from anywhere, any resources. That's what, the, that's what the asterisk means. And the second example means image are allowed to be loaded only from the current site's origin. So which starts with the same domain. And if you have your scripts or styles or images from the same domain loaded, then that's okay. But anything else from other resources like other domains will get blocked. So we've seen these two directives so far, but of course there are much more that we can use. There are one for styles, for fonts, for media objects, for form action as well, and for, yeah, let's say, all kind of types that you will encounter when you build your website. And the same goes for sources. We don't can use just these two. We can also define um, concrete domains, origins that we allow, and also use the asterisk for subdomains. But we can also use um, the none keyword, which says we don't want any resources to be loaded for, let's say, images or scripts or something else. So when you take a look at some examples from real sites, this is from my blog where I integrated this. You have this um, header and you have the big long string that um, contains your policies. And you can also already see that even for my simple small blog, which is not that big, there are a lot of things I need to allow in order to make it work. And this is due to things like Google Analytics or a Facebook SDK that I use at some point. And it quite easily gets very long and messy. But it's a good way to tell the browser what resources I want to allow on my side. Here's also another example from Facebook. Yeah looks kind of similar. So mainly we have talked now about um, sources that come from other services, from other domains, but we also have to handle inline things like inline scripts or inline styles. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky because how do you know um, if they weren't ejected by any attack? Because with cross-site scripting, people try to attack your site to include some scripts or styles to your site. And when another user then loads the site, the browser sees the scripts and styles, and it comes from your sites, and the browser says, okay, it's okay. I will execute the script. I will allow these styles. And this is something where it gets tricky because you don't know if they are valid or not. So this is where we have nonces and hashes with content security policies. So here's what we don't want to do. There is a keyword for directives that says we can um, unsave inline scripts or style. So when you have this in your header, the browser will let you um, use any inline scripts or styles that the website has included. And we don't want to do that because this is exactly why we want to use CSP um, to avoid this stuff, to avoid scripts and styles that we don't want into our site. 
So what we can do now is use nonces as one example. We define for a directive a nonce, which is just a random string similar to WordPress nonces. And you then can also use this nonce for inline scripts and styles, where you can say, okay, here's the nonce, here's the keyword. When the browser gets the site, um, it will check if the nonce from the header, from the CSP header, is the same with the one in the script tag or in the style tag. And what you need to make sure is that with every refresh of the page that you get um, a different nonce, because if not, it wouldn't be useful anymore. So this is one approach that we can use for inline styles and scripts. Another one is hashes. And this works quite yeah, a little bit differently. Because what you can do is you can use the content of a script or a style, hash it. It also gets then base encoded. And you get like this hash that you can set inside your header. And in this header you also define which method you did use for the hashing. So in this case, it's SHA-256 um, uh, that I've used to um, hash the script. So when the browser then loads the site again, it sees this hash. It also sees, okay, there is an inline script, and he will try to hash the script. And if the hash is the same like in the header, then he will allow this one. If it's not the same, he will block it, and the resource will not get loaded. Excuse me? Yeah. The, the speed difference on the delivery between the nonce and the hash. Sorry? The speed difference between the nonce and the hash is it? What the difference is? Yeah. It's speed. The speed. The speed. The speed. Yeah. Um, I, I can't tell you that. Sorry. We can look it up later together and we see if there's a difference. Um, I haven't come across any resource that said that there is a special difference, but uh, it's a good question. Okay, now about browser support, because yeah, it's, it's sometimes a pain. So with content security policy, um, we have three versions of it right now. The third one is the next one. It's not yet implemented. It's a working draft by the W3C, so we can get rid of this for now. Everything that I've shown you today is from the level two CSP. And yeah, all major and current browsers support it, so that's quite good, except the Internet Explorer, of course, but um, it has its own um, X content security policy header, which is also deprecated, but um, you can use it if you want to do some CSP stuff for Internet Explorer as well. The only thing where um, it could lead into a problem are these browsers right now because they only support CSP level 1 and when if you and your site uses CSP level 2 then nonces and hashes are not um, included in CSP level 1 so they will get ignored so this could lead to a problem where you say okay the script um, I, for me it's okay I have a nonce so I will allow it but Internet Explorer or other I'm sorry the Edge Explorer version 12 or other browsers um, don't know what the hash is, so it will ignore this, and it will lead to that this resource gets blocked on your site, and maybe your site don't work anymore. So you need to make sure what browsers do you want to support, and how to build fallbacks to don't let this case to happen. Since we are at the WordPress conference, we probably should talk about WordPress as well, so how we can integrate this into a WordPress site. So there are these three options right now, and yeah, let's take a look at each of them. You can, of course, use server configuration to add a HTTP header to your site. This is not WordPress specific, and it's like the highest level where you can add a header. And you can set it like this for Apache in the htaccess file, or you can also do it like this for your Nginx server inside your server block. So you need to define the whole string here. So as you can see, that this will get quite big and long if you have multiple resources you want to allow. What you also can do is you can um, add the header inside your theme files. So um, there's one use case where you might think this could be useful. This is when you have different themes with different resources you load and you want to define 
um, the security header on a theme level. So this is the only thing that I came to mind and where I said, okay, this could be useful there because normally I guess we want to um, separate those um, configurations from your theme and we don't want to include them there, but it's possible. And the third and probably best option is create your own plugin where you add the header. Maybe you have a plugin just for security headers. There are more security headers out there like the content security policy. I won't cover them, so this could be useful or you use a plugin that's already given. And I found this one, WP Content Security Plugin, which I tried and tested and it works quite well and it adds some <laughs> configurations to your WordPress backend where you can define some general option for CSP header and you can also add for each directive the resources that gets loaded. So um, this solves a little bit the messy problem because you can define for every directive here which of the resources I want to allow. So in this case I have some stuff for Google Analytics and yeah, I also have the unsafe inline in this example but this is what we don't want actually. So this is a good way if you want to start with CSP and want to try it out. But um, with WordPress there are a few things you need to be aware of because um, CSP and WordPress, yeah, let's say they're not the best friends. The problem is um, even with WordPress, the core and the themes that comes with WordPress, you get a lot of inside, um, um, inside styles and scripts which are tricky to handle. Um, for, for example, there's the emoji detection support script that gets automatically added to your header and yeah, you can just add a nonce there very easily. So what you can do is you can do a hash, but then there are also inline styles for, let's say, if you're logged in to your site and you have the admin bar, then WordPress will add some inline styles there as well. Then you need to take care of that. And it gets even more complicated when you think about themes and plugins, because many of them put a lot of um, styles inside your markup, and this will make it much more difficult to use CSP. So the best approach here is to write your own themes, write your own plugins, because there you can define how it is set up. You can put every style and scripts inside external files. That's always a better approach because it's also better for the browser um, to cache. So I would recommend that. And yeah, just need to be, you just need to be aware of that it's quite complicated to start with some WordPress stuff, but it's definitely possible. So um, here's what I would recommend. Um, we will go through each steps of them. Now, there is another header which is called Content Security Policy Report Only. It works very similar to the other one, but it only will tell the browser what violations will be triggered, but the browser won't stop loading these files. So you can use this in any of your live sites. You will see the errors in the browser and the console bar, but all resources are still being loaded and it's not active. So it's like a debug mode for CSP and it's perfect for testing. So definitely start with this, try to define your policy with this header. This is also something you can set inside the plugin settings and then you go step by step to work you through um, before you use the real header. Just waiting for the picture, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Then what I also would recommend is using the default directive. So every directive that you haven't set, like this one, we haven't set any directives for images or scripts, only the default one, we lead into this default directive. So if we say default is self, we only allow scripts and styles from the same origin, then this will work for every directive now that's possible. And you can also use the default with other directive um, together, so to have the fallback for this one. The only thing you need to be aware of is um, when you start using another directive, like the image one, it won't use any of the policies inside the default directive. So just make sure when you start using a directive like images or scripts, that every, every policy you want to make, do it inside there, and it will not be triggered the default ones. So that, that's a common mistake that I also ran into. 
Yeah, and then you can start with error-driven development. So um, this is what I did for one of my sites. I started with a policy in, in report mode. I added the default source to self, so only styles from the same origin are allowed. And it led to these 53 errors that I got. And yeah, it was quite interesting because you see a lot of stuff that you didn't know um, your site needs. So even when you use Google Analytics, it's not just one script that they load. There are different um, origins that you need to add to make it work. And also Facebook SDK needs some styles to add. I don't know why, but they do. And it all lets up to these 53 errors. And you then need to go through every one of them, go step by step, see what is loaded. Is it OK? Is it not? Can I use normal directive? Can I use a normal policy? Do we need a nonce or maybe a hash? And yeah, it takes some, quite some time, but you get to know your site a little bit better. And at the end, it will be worth it. And there's also another great feature um, with um, level two of CSP, which is called the report URI directive. So what happens here is you can say whenever there is a violation to the CSP header, it should send this information to uh, a domain that you define. And what it will send is this JSON, JSON object, which tells you, OK, this is the URI where the violation happened. Um, what was the blocked URI, the violation directive, and the original policy. And this is really important when you start using CSP, because there will be edge cases, and you want to know about these errors. Because um, if you don't see them, yeah, you can't do anything about them. And there are services like um, reportui.com where you can get a URL that you can put in in the header so that you can put in here. And this site can list you all the files that get collected. But also the plugin that I showed um, has also an option to show all these errors. So make sure that you use this send report stuff to, um, yeah, to, to lock what's happening on your site and if there are any errors. So we've seen that already. OK, that's already most of it from my talk. So quick summary, check out USP, try to use it, get yourself familiar with it. It's a great way to just start um, putting more security to your site. Don't try to allow inline scripts. There are certain cases where it's, um, where it's not possible and where you need to allow it. But if you can, don't do it because yeah, it will add um, more security leak to your site. Start in report only mode so you can test your site. Um, no errors, just the, the logs that tell us what went wrong. And yeah, start learning about your site and your dependencies. And I'm pretty sure when you use CSP, you will be quite surprised what sources are being loaded and yeah, it's, it's, it's good to know your site. If you got, um, want to know more about it, there are a few blog posts I did on this topic. Um, you can find on my blog. And there are some official documents that I also have here. I will also share the slides later so you can check them out. And yeah, this was it from my side. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, I have a question. Uh, I don't understand the whole concept of that because when someone has injected some code on my web page, what does one uh, stop from editing the CSP headers? So I don't understand what's the, 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 the goal of the code. I missed something. Okay, um, let's say um, the attacker has injected some script on your side you and it's an inline script. Repeat the question for the ah, sorry. The question was, um, what is the whole concept? Because if someone has already put in some scripts into your site, then it could also change um, the header. And why would it be secure then? So from my point of view, I don't think that it's possible to change the header before the browser um, loads the site and checks what is allowed and what not. So I don't think it's possible to afterward um, change the header. So if uh, I mean, someone has uh, a WordPress website, which happens often, yeah. and then uh, some PHP uh, 
uh, uh, template loads some inline uh, scripts on the page. Uh, yeah. What's the what does it bring? It brings you that the, the inline script um, is not that doesn't work if it's not allowed. So if you say you don't allow inline scripts, then the script won't get executed by a browser. Yeah, but my web page has been manipulated, so uh, it's possible to manipulate everything on it. Yeah, I guess it depends here on the kind of manipulation, but um, if there's only one script that's included into your site and you can prevent that from being executed, then it will um, already helps you. But if the attack is like yeah, a bigger one where the user has access to more than just um, including the script, then it gets, of course, more difficult, and then maybe this doesn't help anymore. So this only helps with comment forms or, or something where someone puts in a code in a form and then puts a send button, and at this stage it, it's creating something. Or something. Yeah, yeah, for common um, cross-site scripting attacks where you can add any kind of JavaScript through forms or other stuff into your site and other data injection where scripts get to your page that you don't want them to do. Of course, if, you, if, the, if the user has access to the server or something else, then yeah, this won't help you anymore. But good question, thanks. <coughs> Any more questions? <coughs> okay, I'm here the whole day. If you got questions later or want to talk about other stuff of my work, just find me around. And yeah, thank you very much for your attention. <coughs>